Hey everybody, this is Carl with Trial Byte Studios. And this is Josh. Alright, and so today we are talking about ontogeny, which is a fun way of saying uh, growing up, basically. Yep. Um, it, it's the, the realm of science pertaining to your development from an embryo all the way to adult, and uh, specifically we are talking about uh, nanotyrannus in terms of... Uh, Accepting, on, uh, in, in, accepting yeah in terms pieces. of acceptance um uh compared and contrast to pachycephalosaurus and sticky moloch and draco rex yep so josh why don't you kind of bring us in on that all one? right so my problem with this and i've noticed it for a while is when paleontologists come up with an idea like the pachycephalosaurus sticky moloch and draco rex all being part of a Family developmental tree, stage or developmental stage most of the paleontology community or what i like to call armchair paleontologists because none of us actually have a degree in this um all jumped on board where it's like yeah that makes sense well it made sense because there's evidence to prove it right if you look at the skulls, there a lot of the structures and knobs and bibs and bops on the skulls and stuff all are in the same spot. Which, if they're in a growth stage, makes sense. You know, your arm is going to be where your arm is no matter what stage of life you're in. Right, exactly. However, with Nanotyrannus, we have such little evidence for either field of it's a juvenile or it's a its own species mm -hmm. yet everyone in the paleontology community that i've ever read their uh you know forum or watched one of their own youtube videos or whatever automatically jumps on the bandwagon of it's a juvenile t-rex and uh i don't remember i don't think you remember when we first started this channel i had a theory that nano tyrannus was actually the last albertosaur yeah um, and from what evidence there is, it kind of proves that, in, or at least leans towards that, because of the uh, head structure is far different. Your, their fingers are longer than the adult T-Rex. Last time I checked, your fingers don't shrink when you get older. Right. Um, even if you get bigger, your fingers still don't shrink. They get bigger with you. Mm -hmm. Everything... Now, I understand that these animals grow differently than modern animals. So, and since we don't have any live species, we're not, we can't actually, you know, document how they would go from egg to adulthood. So, I fully uh, I am aware of that. However, the fact remains that the paleontology community jumped on the bandwagon, uh, without actually sitting down and looking at the evidence. And I think that was mo mostly because of who was leading the charges paleontology wise, or yeah, paleontologist wise, yeah, uh, for the arguments. It was Jack Horner. <laughs> yeah. Um, Which is your little thorn in your side that yeah. you like to jump on. Very big, ugly thorn, actually. Ha! <laughs> Got he! <laughs> Got he! <laughs> Um, so what, what is your thoughts on the so whole thing? Let me play devil's advocate here for a second. You said that, I you do know, like this uh, game of yours. <laughs> oh, don't you though? Um, oh, I do. <laughs> it makes for a much better conversation. It sure does. Um, you said that, you know, parts normally don't move as you grow and things don't normally shrink. Um, that for the most part is correct. Um, but what about flounders? A what? A flounder. Okay, you're gonna have to give me the definition of this because uh, no, 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 like a, a fish, you know, a, oh, a haddock. Mean, okay, a fish. Yeah, a haddock. Okay. So you know that they start out as like regular <clears throat> fish with eye with two eyes on either side. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then as they develop through their developmental stages, that eye moves up over to the other side to adapt to them being to to them laying on the bottom of the the ocean. I was not aware of this. Okay. I'm not a fish guy. You're the fish I'm guy. I'm the fish guy, yeah. So, with flounders and, you know, their moving eyes, quite literally, their eyes move. Yeah, their entire uh, yeah, body Yeah, their, their entire body changes through their developmental structure, or through, through, through their uh, developmental stages. 
is it not possible that we've got something kind of like that um, with Nano Tyrannus being a, a juvenile T-Rex? Where even, okay, because you're thinking about it like this, maybe uh, as they grow older, their fingers actually do shrink and become more vestigial. Maybe they use those fingers in their early developmental stages to like grasp or clasp uh, smaller prey because obviously they're going for smaller things when they're young or when they're, cause they're smaller, right? They're going yeah. for smaller prey. They need to use, and their head's not fully developed. The jaw's not fully developed. They don't have that bite power like the adults do. Is it, po- is it not possible that they could use those fingers and those, uh, you know, slightly longer arms to clasp onto a prey item and then let the head do the work. Now, obviously, the adults don't need that, okay? Because or the adults taking a literally a uh, oil drum size right. bite out of whatever they it could wants. take a bite out of an SUV exactly. But the young, the, the <clears throat> juveniles wouldn't be able to do that, and they're going to be hunting in a style that's much more akin to raptors, right? They're going to be using that uh, their dexterity and their uh, speed to catch smaller prey animals. Yeah. Your thoughts. The, no, <laughs> you, you are right. There is uh, a possibility of that happening. However, like I said, we don't have enough specimens and uh, evidence to really counteract which side it is. Mm-hmm. So that's what I'm saying is when you don't have a lot of evidence to support either side, why is it okay for the paleontology community to literally just throw out the one right, side. Right, to, sh- to shun the other side. <clears throat> that's, and that's what I was getting at. That, I, so, I understand, fully understand that, you know, yes, there are some animals, like you said, the flounder, and I think there's a few species. other species um, that do have a very rapid and total... Radical developmental yeah, cycle. Uh, I mean, look at a caterpillar to a butterfly. I mean, right, but, there, okay, but that's but not... I get this. That's an invertebrate, and we're talking right, about right. Let's talk um, about. Let's, st- let's stick with vertebrates. But I mean, frogs, for example, too. I yeah. Mean, if you want to, uh, another. Yeah, like who would look at a tadpole and be like, "Oh, yeah, that's a frog." Yeah. Um, <laughs> like I if mean, we just. <laughs> there are species that do rapidly change for a different lifestyle from a juvenile to adult. Right. But since we're talking about fossils and we're talking about animals that have been dead for 65 million it's years it's all speculation it's all a guess and there are you know look at the brontosaurus apatosaurus debate right we now in 2015 just said yeah brontosaurus is actually a real species so who's to say it tomorrow they don't come up and go actually we're wrong because we forgot to carry the one or something exactly you know? It's, it's all speculation. That's, that's where I'm getting at. So is. I think what your biggest gripe with it is not the, the possibility that it could be, but it's the, the fact that everybody has thrown out one side of the argument to accept another side of the argument when the evidence doesn't really clearly point one way or another. Yeah. If you're going to point at something and say, this is how it is, at least have the evidence to back it up, not just throw crap at the wall and see if it sticks. You know, the Jack Horner method. Right. As you brought up in one of your videos. Just throw shit at the wall and hope that something sticks. Um, I mean, when he said the whole Pachycephalosaurus thing, he was right at that one because there's evidence to support it. There's, you, you look at uh, the horn structures in Stiggy Moloch, one of the sides of the bone was severely uh, decaying and the other side was... Uh, not yeah so that means the bone was re- being reabsorbed and the dome was getting bigger right the uh, knobs on the muscle were all in the same place mm-hmm. well if they're all in the same place that means they are probably the same species because each that species is going to have a key char- key characteristics that are going to uh, define that species right so uh, even when he was found all the juvenile t- triceratops and their vast de- um, ontogeny uh-huh. uh, differences from when you were hatched, the horns are almost non-existent, non-existent. in the frills laying down to horns in a uh, curving upward, curving upward, curving, in a young, going uh, straight, juvenile, curving and forward, forward and having the, uh, uh, what's the triangle bones on the frill? I forget the name of it. 
Oh, I can't think of it. I can't think of it off the top of my head. But you know exactly the little what triangle ones, yeah, they get reabsorbed into the frill the as the top. animal gets older. So, yes, that's, you know, there's evidence for it. There's fossils. They go boom, boom, step one through 29 or, and all that. Sure. But with T-Rex in the environment that T-Rex lives in, which is the Hell Creek, and we know it was a bias against smaller animals not fossilizing. Because it's easier to, if you're bigger to fossilize than you if you are smaller. Yeah. Uh, or have fragile or, yeah, more fragile bones. It's easier for them to not get fossilized. So for a debate on an animal worth little to no evidence, and you're just going to jump on the one side, it doesn't make any sense. That's what I'm getting at. Okay. I, I get that. Um... But what, here's the kicker from Carl. Yeah, but uh, but what's what's the point? <laughs> what do you mean? What's the point? I mean, like, what's the uh, what's what's what are we leading up to? You're gonna because I guess what happens is here's the scientific point of view. You've got a theory that's already accepted. Uh, dinosaur ontology, right? That's ontogeny, the yeah. anto Yes, thank you. Ontogeny, not ontology. Ontology, different subject but you've got dinosaur ontogeny as your accepted theory and now you found something that looks very similar to a uh, juvenile or very similar to a tyrannosaurus rex but smaller and you know uh that this environment had other mid-sized small-sized predators in it and you're sitting there and you look at this structure the skeleton structure that looks or these bone fragments that look eerily similar to a t-rex and you stop and you think to yourself okay well this could be a brand new species but what is it doing in that ecological niche that nothing else is doing and then you stop and you think well nothing okay maybe this is a developmental stage so i think the burden of proof is definitely on the uh, its own spe is on the uh, it being its own species camp, because the ontogeny has become something that is very widely accepted. Okay, but can I just the small skulls that we do have that are labeled either Nano Tyrannus or um, T Rex juveniles? You do know there's a, a random hole in it that is not on a T. Uh, the normal skull of a T-Rex, right? Yeah, I know. So why would it have a, that hole? Why does a flounder's eye start out at the front of its head? It's a developmental cycle. No, but I'm saying... Even... Okay, you know how uh, the head of an animal has sutures in it? Yes. But when you look at these skulls, that suture that was supposed to be there for the T-Rex is not there in maybe, those skulls maybe it develops later so that's why I'm, that's what i'm saying it's like how, how can you say hey this is a juvenile if there's no suture that would prove that's a juvenile See, but now i think we're getting back into the uh into the actual debate of if it's its own species or not not the uh the idea which you're trying to argue which is um why is everybody throwing one out the door. one out the window and accepting the other one. And I think I, again, I'm playing devil's advocate, um, but well, if you didn't, uh, who would? Right. But so what is so? And my argument is, you know, that the ontogeny is already accepted. You're looking at it; it looks very similar. It would be logical I, to conclude that it was ontogeny, other than a separate species. So as far as but the separate so, species idea was first, right. But that doesn't now, mean it's right. No, I'm not saying it's right. <laughs> I didn't say it was the right one or the wrong one. No, okay. But so what I'm saying is, uh, uh, what there is needs the... to be more evidence or uh, discoveries to lean more or less in which side of it than there is now. So what's the what's the logical? Yeah, I guess it, it, what it comes down to is. The burden of proof is on its own species camp, right? That's now it is. I mean, yeah, I, I, I'm assuming that they will most likely have to find something with like a name tag on it. Says, something on Nano Tyrannus. Something, but very uh, outstanding, condemning. Yeah. But, uh, and I get the uh, fact that you know, 
it's easier to just mark it as a juvenile T-Rex. It would be, like you said, since well, it, it follows other animals, it accepts the, the the theory that we that is already widely accepted. Well, it's not really ex- a theory. I mean, it's in stone. Well, no, it, it's how... still a theory. I mean, but it, it accepts that theory now. That like the by saying it, it's a juvenile, we're accepting what we know about dinosaur development. It's not um, it, it because it, we got we we talked about this in the original video, um, but it's like where is this animal in terms of its ecological niche? What's it doing in its role? Um, so by looking at that and saying there's already stuff in that role, and this looks too similar to a T Rex for us to rule it out. I think that logically concludes that it's, you know, just a, a case of, onto- uh, un- of ontogeny. This is a developmental cycle. So what I'm saying is my, my the, the devil's arg- advocate argument, for me anyway, is uh, this is already accepting with the rest of our uh, knowledge of dinosaur development. So why shouldn't we accept it? What's the thing that stands out that says that this shouldn't be accepted? We know that animals go through different uh, cycles in their growth. We know that they can change radically in their growth cycles. Um, so why, why, why is it... Where is the logical reasoning behind it being its own species? Um, your floor. <laughs> I don't... I don't really know. I mean, or or just to get the theory to be accepted, what is the what is the thing that you would come up forward and say? I like, mean, if the one thing that I, I guess the smoking gun, I guess, is the term I'm looking for, is obviously we'll need more fossil evidence for either side, and that's basically what I've been saying since the beginning of this argument is. But you can you keep going back and forth between the juvenile and a new species there's evidence like you said that shows yeah it has all the markers of a t-rex that would be in a sub-adult or juvenile stage of development but when you look at things that we know that like t-rex adults have where there's a suture uh running down the face you know the front face uh where the uh what's the the, the bridge of the nose. The nasal ridge. The, yeah. Where there's a defined line where it shows the bones come together. And when you, you look at some of these animals that are skulls that were labeled nano tyrants, they don't have those. Mm-hmm. So there are evident, there's small evidence that saying this could be a possible new species. And there's markers that are saying it could just be a T Rex in, you know, a stage, a uh, growth stage. I'm, what I'm trying to say is don't rule out one side of the argument for just uh, for the standards of jumping on a bandwagon with everybody else. Well, I don't think that's what I was getting at. I don't think it's jumping on a bandwagon because it is concluding with the, the evidence that we have. And uh, that was something we talked about in a couple of my biology classes is like when you have evidence that's already pointing towards one theory, it's probably that theory. But there's evidence of still pointing to both with right, the but, but that, uh, markers that, that should be there are not there. Right, but that then puts the burden of proof back into the other camp because it's already lining up more closely with this theory. With the one theory and not the other theory. So by going against that one theory, now it's becoming like a uh, yes, you still you still could be absolutely right, right? Mm-hmm. But it's more accepted uh, because it already lines up with the theory we have in place. So you could be absolutely right and you uh, it could be a completely new species. But with the evidence we have now, it's starting to point in a different direction, which is why I think most people are apt to just kind of throw the other one out the window, which I still think is wrong. I'm not I mean, I'm not actually arguing to, for this. I'm just playing devil's advocate. Uh, I mean, it goes back to the whole um, apatosaurus and brontosaurus thing as well. Mm-hmm. I mean, when our parents were kids, brontosaurus was a species. I mean, granted, the animal was thrown together with multiple other animals um fossils to create what is the old brontosaurus 
However, we now know that it's actually a like closer relation of an apatosaurus with minor uh, other internal bone differences. Well, and who's to say that's not a speciation, uh, you know, an individual difference or a gender difference? So there's still, you know, I guess, uh, evidence or non-evidence for that one too. But that's all I'm saying is don't, the whole thing about, you know, people jumping on, yes, this is a species. No, this is not a species. Or this is a, a growth stage. Or no, this ain't a growth stage. We're talking about a field that changes so rapidly. And we're all just trying to catch up. Uh, with the information coming out that why are we jumping from one ship to a next instead of sitting back and going okay so what's why can't we accept both of these instead of just the one that's what i'm getting at you Mm -hmm. know that's that's why i'm trying to figure out is why is it okay for you to uh go in and say a patasaurus and brontosaurus are two different species when you know, we looked at these fossils a few years ago and we came up with that conclusion, but yet tomorrow they could re-examine everything and another team would go, no, they're the same species. Well, yeah, that's because... So that's what I'm getting at, is why is it um, okay for one uh, dinosaur to go through this and no one says a thing, but yet if you bring up Nano Tyrannus and T-Rex, everyone loses their crap. Because you haven't found that... I find it funny that I'm finally getting uh, to stump you on this. No, I think it's because you finally haven't found that... Um, you know, that everything that you see in a nanotyrannus, you can explain away by saying it's ontogeny. There's nothing there that you, is, like, definitively a separate species. And I think that's, that, that is why people are more willing to accept the ontogeny debate and not the... Uh, or the ontogeny theory and not the... Um, separate species theory i don't think it's because they're just jumping on the bandwagon i don't think it's because they're just they just like all adore jack horner or something like that i think it's because with the evidence that is being presented right now it's more logical to conclude ontogeny instead of speciation at this point granted i don't really believe that (laughs) i'm just uh playing like i said i'm playing devil's i'm playing i'm playing the fiddle for the other camp right now so okay so Let's put down the fiddle and okay. where, where do you stand on this? Truthfully, I think that is a, I think it is a separate species because the suture in the skull, if you have a suture in a skull in a uh, in an older specimen, normally that suture in the skull is where the skull fused together in development, right? Yeah. You look at babies' heads in humans, and we they have like they well, don't they're not exactly just babies in right any species. babies in any species. You've got uh, not exactly gaps, but there are so, smaller soft spots. Where you know, as that specimen and as that species grows and develops, those uh, they they fuse together and they become a, a ridge or like a, a suture, like you said. And if you don't, if you see that on the skull of an of an adult, you have to see that on the skull of the juvenile. And you don't see that in Nanotyrannus. So I personally think that it is a separate species, but I just wanted to play devil's advocate for the other camp because it's more fun. Yeah, I got that, but I'm just saying... If you can't argue the other side better than the other side can argue, you shouldn't be arguing for your side. This is true. <laughs> and that's a uh, lesson that we can take with anything. Exactly. Um, but I think at the end of the day, it comes down to we just don't have enough evidence in on either side. I agree. Uh, with the... To actually point and prove one... A side of the theory or the other I mean we're talking about the same coin just two different sides one being head one being tails so I guess and like I said this kind of goes back with the other uh, things but yes there's ev- a stronger evidence for the pachycephalosaurus um, ontogeny but since these animals have been dead for 65 million years and no one's seen one hatched from an egg we and watch it through adulthood well we'll be playing this game for until paleontology is no longer yeah until it's not even a science yeah so that's the, that's the idea and that's what something i love about paleontology and why it fascinates me so much because there are some areas of science where 
I mean, science always does change, right? But uh, there are some areas of science where it's very slow change. It's very stagnant. And in paleontology, it's like boom, 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 boom. Things change all the time. And that's why I like it. It is the New York City of science. It sure is. So uh, I think that was, um, now that we've kind of painted both pictures, Yeah. Uh, I hope. Uh, you guys in the comments can um, get a, a discussion going. Let us know your thoughts. Uh, please don't be rude <laughs> to each other. Or uh, do I don't care. <laughs> or, or Carl said, you know, let it, uh, you know, let there be blood. Let there be chaos. But you know, try to keep it a little civil. Um, All right, I think so that'll do it for this us. This is Josh, and this is Carl signing off. Bye. <laughs>